Hello guys and welcome to TGN the Game Nerd, the show where I talk about roleplay games and today we're going to be playing 9 Hours, 9 Persons, 9 Doors. In the last episode, if you don't remember, we went ahead and made our way throughout the kitchen and we have arrived right here, uh, right outside this staircase and this hallway right here, and there's a lot that we have to explore, so without further ado, let's go ahead and begin exploring. They stepped out of the kitchen and into a hallway that looked rather familiar. Metal grates stretched from wall to wall. Beyond it were two elevators and the entrance to the kitchen. They had entered the kitchen from one door and come out the other. That meant their map of the ship's interior was accurate. They laid the map out in front of them and began to discuss their next step. There were four possible routes. A, B, C, and D. First A and B. A and B both seemed to connect to an L-shaped room. However, the two doors that led to the room were both locked and could not be opened. Next was Route C. And this goes all the way to the main staircase. That means it's door 5, one of those numbered doors. Then, do you think we would meet up with the other four after this hallway? No, I don't think we will. Why not? Look. There, by the stairs. See how the gate is opened? When we went into the kitchen, it was closed. But it's open now. What do you think that means? They opened it. Most likely. Then if we take Route C, we're going backwards. That would be pointless. Then that means... All four looked at the map. They all looked at the staircase, its lazy curve leading down, deeper into the ship. Route D, then. D it is. Yep, Route D. Then we're set. They jogged down the stairs until they reached the sea deck. And just to be sure, they kept going to check the deck beneath. Yeah, just like I thought, D deck D is totally underwater. Just like the bottom of the central staircase. And the water gazed back at them, its smooth surface like a great mirror. As ominous as it was, Junpei took at least some comfort from the fact that the level hadn't gone up much since the last time he'd seen it. And they turned back to Sea Deck. It didn't take them long to find the two elevators in front of the stairs. They looked identical to the elevators on the top floor, with one exception. These elevators had a card reader on the wall between them. On the card reader was a strange mark. Hey look, it's Lotus' symbol. Huh? See, it's a woman symbol with a thorn on it. That, that seems like... Ouch, 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 ouch! Lotus had taken hold of Junpei's hair. She began to shake him violently, and he thought he heard a low growl coming from her throat. Such violence. Junpei began to wonder if she was not the devil itself. With an uncomfortable smile, Jun spoke up. This is the Mercury symbol. The thorn symbolizes the wings on Hermes' staff. Hermes, herpes, whatever. If we can't get this thing to work, these elevators aren't going anywhere. In other words, we need a keycard with the Mercury symbol on it. Probably. They gave up on the elevator and returned to the stairs. A hallway stretched out to the left. A great many doors lined both sides of the hallway. They weren't sure how many, but certainly enough to be discouraging. Damn it, if we try and search all these, the sun's gonna go down before we've done half of them. I think the sun already set. I have a feeling the ship is the only thing that's going to be going down anytime soon. That's even worse! Well, we can come back to this hallway later. Let's check the hallway on the other side, shall we? Frustration and fear building, they walked back to the stairs. To their right was a small hallway. Quickly, they headed into it. It was approximately the same size as the alcove in the front of the stairs. And the hallway led toward the stern, and at its end was the set of double doors. Let's open it. Junpei nodded and grabbed the one closest to him. He gave it a small tug and felt it move. It was unlocked. Thrilled to have found an unlocked door, he threw it open. Yeah. 
Junpei didn't know what to make of what he saw. He simply stood, unable to speak. The other simply stared, open-mouthed. After a few long moments, Santa managed to speak. Wh what the hell is this? A massive room stretched out in front of them, more a cavern than a room. Its vastness was oppressive, and it bore down on the four companions. It was not empty, however. The entire room was lined with, filled with lines upon lines of beds. They were simple things, little more than pipe and thin mattresses. Is... is this a hospital? He had at last been able to put a name to the harsh scent that pervaded the room. The room swam with the harsh, biting smell of antiseptic. In the center of the room were shelves stacked with medicine and a number of medical devices, the function of which Junpei did not know. More importantly, however, on the back wall of the room were four doors. Three of them were emblazoned with large, single-digit numbers made with thick red paint. The door on the left was labeled three. The second door from the left had no number, but the third had been given a seven. And the rightmost door had an eight. There could be no doubt, they were numbered doors. It did strike Junpei as strange, however, that the door between three and seven should be blank. What, he wondered, it could mean. Let's take a look at the doors. Fun fact about the numbered doors, each time that we run into a set of numbered doors, that set, the digital root of adding all of the doors together is equal to 9. So for example, the first choice we had was 4 and 5. 4 plus 5 equals 9. Then here we have 3, 7, and 8. 3 plus 7 plus 8 is 18. Uh, 1 plus 8 is 9. And finally, other than the number 9 door, the remaining doors that we have are 1, 2, and 6. Uh, 1 plus 2 plus 6 is 9. So, fun fact for you there. Let's take a look at the doors. Yes, that sounds like a good plan. Junpei headed toward the doors, weaving his way between the beds. He started with door 3 on the left, and moved to the right until he reached door 8. It's no use. Well, of course. If it was that easy to open these doors, what point would there be to the nonary game? We have to activate the red or the numbered doors won't... Wait a minute. What's wrong? Look, the display on the red. There's nothing on it. Huh? Don't you remember? The red at the central staircase. If no one was inside, it said vacant. Oh yeah, you're right. But this one... There's nothing on it. Right? I wonder if it's broken. Only way to find out. It didn't respond. All four took turns placing their hands over the red, but it refused to respond. They pulled at the lever, and still it did nothing. As they soon discovered, it wasn't only the red for door 8 that was behaving strangely. The red on door 7 also refused to respond. And door 3 was similarly silent. None of them would respond. What did it mean? Huh, <laughs> I knew it. They're broken. Zero sure sucks at maintenance. No, that's impossible. You really think Zero, who prepared all of this, would make such a stupid simple mistake? Maybe, but that doesn't explain why this thing ain't working. It was at that moment that they heard a voice from behind them. I believe the bottom of the device has been removed. And they spun around to see... Snake! But it was more than just Snake. Ace, Clover, and Seven quickly filed into the room as well. Although they were glad to see one another, it wasn't terribly surprising that they had. If it had been the other party who'd opened the gate in front of the kitchen, it wasn't unreasonable to think they'd bump into each other eventually. The rest of Snake's team, however, did look rather surprised. How? How did you guys... 
How did you end up here? After a moment of silence and surprise, everyone suddenly began to talk, desperate to exchange information. They talked about the rooms they'd been through and how they'd ended up in the same place. Of course, none of it was very useful information, but that hardly mattered. They were happy to simply see one another again. Although the level of cheer varied greatly from person to person, each one of them was wearing some manner of smile. Almost as though they had already forgotten about the death of the night man. Ninth man. No, thought Junpei. Perhaps that wasn't it. Perhaps thoughts of his death were what drove them to smile at one another. Not in a morbid or hateful way, no. The ninth man had died, but they were still alive, and that was something to be happy about. A sort of simple, uncomplicated joy, Junpei thought. The joy of being alive. Still alive. He felt sorry for the ninth man, but more than anything, Junpei was just happy to be alive. There you have it. Our half of the story. His part finished, Ace fell silent. For a moment, Junpei was silent in thought. Then he spoke. Okay, let me see if I've got this all straight. When you guys got here, the bases for the Reds were already gone. And you looked all over this room, but you couldn't find anything. So you figured... So you figured... That there might be something in the hallway with all the doors. So you went and had a look? Yeah. And while you were looking around, you heard voices. Uh-huh. So you followed the voices and came back here. Indeed. And that was how we found you. Junpei examined the three reds again, just in case. On the bottom of each was a long, thin gap. It looked like a slot for something. Probably something electronic. Well, this isn't good. If the red is inactive, we can't keep going. Well, what about that hallway over there? Isn't there anywhere else we can go? No, there isn't. There are plenty more hospital rooms, but nothing else. Hospital rooms? That's what's behind all those doors? Yes, there are a number of individual rooms, in addition to this large one. There was a door at the end of the hallway, but it was locked. There was an astrological symbol engraved near the keyhole, however. I was able to get a good, uh, feel of it. I believe it was the symbol of Jupiter. Not again. Those goddamn things are everywhere. I wonder what they all mean. For a moment, everyone was silent, deep in thought. While we're asking what things mean, what's the deal with this room? I mean, I thought this was a cruise ship, but I can't imagine a cruise ship would have a hospital like this. Of all people, it was Seven who answered, with calm confidence. Well, I figure it's probably a hospital ship. Chances are it's the Gigantic. The Gigantic? Junpei looked confused. So did everyone else. What's this Gigantic? Seven did his brow for, brows for a moment, then began to explain. The Gigantic! He explained that she had been a sister ship to the Titanic built in the early 20th century. The Titanic had two sister ships who were identical to one another in nearly every aspect. The Gigantic was said to be one of them. She was initially intended to be a passenger line, like the Titanic, but soon after the ship was launched, the First World War began, and she was pressed into duty by the British Navy as a hospital ship. Sometime later, the Gigantic was damaged by a German mine in, in the Aegean Sea. She managed to run aground after the incident, and consequently was not sunk. What, then, happened to the Gigantic after her fateful encounter in the Aegean Sea? One theory ran that a man named Lord Gordain purchased her. Lord Gordain, it seemed, had been one of the few survivors of the Titanic tragedy, and that trauma had turned him into an obsessive collector of all things related to the Titanic. As his obsession deepened, he began to desire the Titanic itself. That, of course, was impossible. The Titanic lay at the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean. The Gigantic, however, had not suffered such a dire fate. As she was identical to her sister's ship, she caught Lord Gordain's eye. So you're saying this Lord Gordain bought this ship? Yeah, at least, I think I am. That's impossible. No way we're in some boat that's almost a hundred years old. Pipe down, just pay attention. What, that's it? Well, have you got any proof? Proof? Proof that this ship is really the Gigantic. 
Well, uh, this ship's got stuff that's like the Titanic and a hospital ship, so I just figured... Oh, for goodness. Don't tell me that's your only reason. No, I've got more. Like? Well, uh, I mean... Seven looked around desperately, doing anything to avoid meeting Lotus's piercing stare. He scratched his head for a moment, then gave up. Finally, he'd, he opened his mouth. I don't know. Lotus sighed and shook her head. I guess your memory isn't back yet, is it? Yeah, sorry about that. Hey, 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 wait a minute. Memory isn't back? Junpei was, he felt, legitimately shocked by what seemed to be new and very important information. Everyone else, however, seemed unimpressed. The, in fact, they all looked at Junpei as though he had said something very strange. He decided to revise his attitude for the next question. Wait, was I the only one that didn't know? Everyone nodded. Why? Oh, yeah, I guess I didn't tell you, huh? I told the rest of them before we ran into you on the stairs. I told them I couldn't remember a damn thing from before I woke up. What? Then, almost as if to save Junpei from further embarrassment, a bell began to ring from far away. It sounded as though it was the clock at the main stairway. Junpei counted each chime carefully. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. It's midnight. Then we still got six hours left, right? We don't have any time to screw around. Let's get going. We gotta find the missing parts for the Reds. What do you mean, find? How on earth do you propose we do that? We've looked everywhere in this room. That only leaves one place to look. One? Well, I guess that's not really right. Hmm? Wait! Don't tell me you mean we need to search all of the other rooms. Don't freak out. We already searched four of them. Four rooms? We just have to split up the rest between the eight of us. If each person does six rooms, that'll be 48 rooms, right? So there are 48 rooms left? Her earlier experiences had apparently not encouraged Lotus to trust Seven. Seven scratched his head awkwardly. I don't know. After a little more discussion, they split up and headed toward the rooms to begin searching them. Junpei was chosen to search the rooms on the starboard side, moving from fore to aft. And they also determined when they would return to report their findings, the next time the clock sounded the time. When it did, they would meet back in the large central room full of beds. If, during their search, any of them were to locate the missing components, they were to yell for the others. If this strategy failed, they would return to discuss their options later. The details decided they left to begin searching. Out into the hallway they went, each to the rooms they'd been assigned. However, from far away, Junpei heard the bell ring. It did so only once. It was 1 a.m. He jogged through the entrance of the large hospital room to find six of the others already there. Ace, Santa, Clover, June, Seven, and Lotus. They had gathered in front of the door number eight. Or perhaps, to be accurate, they had gathered in front of the red next to the door number eight. Had one of them found the missing piece? What happened, guys? It was June who answered him. Jumpy, look! She was pointing at the red. He pushed through the others until he stood in front of it. Immediately, he knew what she meant. The display on the front of the red read vacant. Junpei sighed. Come on, guys, who was it? I thought we were supposed to yell if we found it. Well... Junpei wondered why she was hesitating. The others looked as confused as June, but kept their mouths shut. What the hell? What is up with you guys? They all knew something he didn't, and Junpei wasn't about to leave things that way. Finally, Lotus frowned and spoke. Well, that's the thing. We don't know. You don't know? When I got back, it was already like this. There was no one else here. That means I was the last one back, but 
the missing parts were already back in the red. Junpei looked at the bottom of the red again just to make sure. The slot that had been open on the bottom was now covered with metal. Clearly whatever had been missing had been returned. What about the other two? They're the same. Junpei quickly examined the other two boxes. Satisfied that they were also repaired, but still very confused, he returned to the others. Alright, I just want to be sure here. Nobody has any idea where the, what the hell happened here, right? Ace and June nodded silently. Seven raised his hands as, as if to say, not me, and Santa just shrugged. Only Clover lowered her head and did nothing. Huh? Wait a minute. That was when he noticed. Where's Snake? Junpei swept his eyes across the room a second time, but Snake was nowhere to be seen. Does that mean he found them? I've no idea. There's nothing to suggest it, but nothing to suggest he didn't either. I don't suppose we'll know until we can ask him in person. Well, whatever he did or didn't do, he's pretty damn late. What the hell is he up to? Maybe he's lost. Yeah, well, that seems likely. Dude can't see. I don't know how he gets around in the first place. Clover raised her head. No, that's impossible! Suddenly, she was shouting. Yeah, my brother's blind, but he's got really great hearing. And he can get around as well as anyone who can see. So he... he couldn't get lost. That's impossible! Clover had started to shake, and the knuckles of her hands had gone white. She spun around, but before she did, Junpei noticed tears bowling up in her eyes. I'm gonna go look for him. Her words were barely out of her mouth when she began to run. Hey, hold on, Clover, wait! Junpei cried out to her, but he was too slow. She kept going, and before anyone else could react, she was gone. Damn it. What should we do now? Well, the red is working now. No, we're not leaving two people behind. We should go look for them. Oh man, this ain't good. Oh yes, what an excellent idea. We just wasted a bunch of time looking for some piece of electronic junk. Now let's waste more by looking for a couple of idiots. Then remain here if you feel you must. But there's no time. We've only five hours left. Junpei and the others nodded to one another and took off at a run. In front of the stairs that led to B deck, they decided to split up. They quickly assigned search areas and went their separate ways. Soon, only two of them were left. Those two were Junpei and Jun, who had been a few steps behind the others. Alright, we should go too. Yes, let's go. But where should we start? Let's see. And we will begin our search for Snake and Clover in the next episode. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye!